Now here we see the 46 chromosomes that make up the human carrier type that's carrying all of the genetic information. And these 46 chromosomes are actually in 23 pairs. And we can see that if we cut them out, and we can see here that they are in fact in pairs, homologous pairs. The 46 chromosomes made up of 23 pairs. Now this pair here doesn't quite look like a pair, but they are because that's the X chromosome. And that's the Y chromosome. The small one is the Y chromosome. So they're all in pairs. These chromosomes are in pairs. And this is useful when we think about cell division and genetics. Because we have mitosis and meiosis. Now in mitosis, we start off with a cell that contains 46 chromosomes. But as we've seen, these are not any 46 chromosomes. These are 23 pairs. So there's one pair. And we can draw another pair. And we could draw more to make our 23 pairs, but it would get a bit cluttered. So I think you can see there that there's 23 pairs of chromosomes making up the nuclear material of the cell. And when each chromosome is represented twice, we call that a diploid cell. So in a diploid cell, each chromosome is represented twice because they're in pairs. Then the process of mitosis, we know is a conservation cell division. So we're going to end up with the same number of chromosomes and the same number of pairs. So again, we're going to start off with 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes, and we're going to end up in the daughter cells with 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Now in meiosis, again, we're going to start off with a diploid cell with the 23 pairs of chromosomes. This could be in the ovaries or testes. So we have the 23 pairs. And the process of meiosis is a reduction cell division. We're going to reduce the number of chromosomes present. So we start off with a diploid cell. We want to end up with a haploid cell with half the number of chromosomes. But not any half, it's got to be one chromosome from each pair. So the clever thing about meiosis is it divides the chromosomes, it divides the homologous pairs and puts them into separate haploid cells. So we end up with one chromosome from each pair. forming the gamete, the sperm, or the egg cell. And then when that combines with another gamete, so if that's a sperm cell, when that combines with the ovum, the ovum will also contribute one chromosome from each pair. So when we want to reproduce, that's going to meet up with its counterpart from the male or the female. That's the male, it meets up with the counterpart from the female which also contains one chromosome from each pair. And I think you can see when these combine, we're going to end up with a new diploid cell with 23 pairs of chromosomes again. And this would be a new zygote, which will go on to divide to form the body of the next generation. So mitosis, a diploid cell, generates diploid daughter cells. Meiosis, a diploid cell, divides by meiosis to form haploid cells. A male haploid cell combines with a female haploid cell to produce a new diploid zygote. The male haploid cells are the sperm, the female haploid cells are the ovum.